Welcome, everything is great. You are listening to Forkin' Bullshirt, the Good Place podcast. I'm Vivian. And I'm Jason. We'll be the architects of your journey into the afterlife. Today we're talking about Season 2, Episode 12, The Burrito. It was written by Megan Amram and Joe Mandy, directed by Dean Holland, and it aired January 25th, 2018. Let's get right into it. The four humans exit the portal into the judge's office, where they spot a burrito sitting on the desk. They briefly consider whether or not this is the test, or if perhaps the burrito is the judge, before the real judge sneaks up behind them. The judge tells them to get comfortable while she takes a look at their files. So immediately, as we were watching it, we were both like, oh my gosh, what if the burrito is the judge? And then, of course, the characters say it. And then Mm -hmm. we're like, oh, what if it's a test? And then the characters say it. So personally, I think this whole opening bit was just kind of a jab at the viewers coming up with weird theories. <laughs> oh, really? I okay. thought it was just a perfect opportunity for them to do something ridiculous to get us like, oh my gosh, it totally is. And then just be like, no, don't be dumb. <laughs> Harsh. Now, or just them playing with us. My memory is of me saying out loud to you, that's definitely the judge's lunch. Yes, I do remember you saying that. Yeah, I don't. I didn't really consider that it was a test or that it was something weirder, I guess. But I do like that they all jump to different conclusions. Chidi, of course, thinks it's a a test. And then Jason thinks outside the box, like, what if the judge is the burrito? You know? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Something that makes zero sense. And then, of course, Eleanor's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Maybe he's right because everything's crazy so far. So who knows? This could be just... Something else in the spectrum of crazy. She says that they've seen weirder things than an almighty burrito, but have they? I feel like that would definitely top the charts on weird. I don't know. Like, they've had 800 reboots. They've had a clam chowder fountain. They've seen a demon smoking a cigarette. Yeah, but they've never had an inanimate object be sentient. Have they? I guess not. Okay, so... But I guess it depends... On where your chart is. Oh. Personally, I think a demon smoking a cigarette is a little out there. But so is an almighty burrito. So Yeah, I'd still say the you know all-knowing, all-powerful burrito would be at the top of my list. Kind of takes the cake. Yeah. Takes the burrito. Oh my god. <laughs> I do really love Eleanor and the rest of them slowly approaching the burrito and speaking very reverently to it, like, oh, great one, we've traveled so far to see you. (laughs) That is a good moment. It is. So we get our reveal. Our judge is Maya Rudolph. Mm -hmm. Great unexpected surprise. I was definitely thinking that it was going to be Nick Offerman because of his very short appearance last episode. So I was completely caught off guard but i love her for this role love her she's so good Mm -hmm. yeah i've only seen her in bridesmaids okay and i really liked her in that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she was great in that i like that the judge lets them dress as themselves now for For the first time yeah Yeah. it's eleanor's first time dressing as she would Mm -hmm. and jason and eleanor are the most obvious ones because They're really the ones that have been wearing disguises this entire time. Mm -hmm. Jason has been wearing Jianyu's outfit, um, and Eleanor has been wearing fake Eleanor's outfits. Mm -hmm. But Chidi's pretty much looks the same, because he's just supposed to be Chidi, and so is Tahani. Not a big change there, but still nice to see. And I think we've seen that dress that Tahani is wearing before in one of her flashbacks. I feel bad saying it, but I do not like how Eleanor looks. Oh, no? Because it kind of looks trashy. Well, yeah. And it's hard to see and think of Eleanor as trashy Eleanor. Right. Because we've seen so much growth from her. But I think that's part of it, too, is maybe she doesn't feel that comfortable in that skin anymore, Mm -hmm. right? She's grown. She's changed that maybe her style has changed with her. Right. I really like the detail of the bright pink bra that you can see through the shirt. Because that's that's always the trashy thing, right? Where you can see the bra. So I kind of like how the judge or Jen is so casual and 
friendly with them and quote unquote down to earth how familiar she is with pop culture of our generation. Mm -hmm. It kind of makes me think that either time has not been going as fast as maybe other people think, like maybe it hasn't been hundreds of years on earth that have passed by. Mm -hmm. Or it's just the writers trying to get in some jokes that are current for us to laugh at, which is dangerous for some shows to do because it dates the show in the future. My thoughts are that sitcoms don't really care so much about dating themselves because most sitcoms that I've watched will make very obvious references to what's going on at the time. And people just kind of go with the flow Mm -hmm. there. And I think that it's likely that it's both. Not as much time has passed or time is sort of meaningless, like they're in their own bubble in the afterlife. And also the writers are trying to get in some nice current jokes in there. Okay. What did you think about Jen saying that she's not omniscient in the way that Chidi means? I think that's perfect. Yeah? Because as a judge, she does need to remain impartial. And if she knows everything all the time, then you can't be impartial. But how does that work in real life, right? A judge living in society is going to know about stuff that's happening in the news. They're going to have opinions about abortion and child abuse, whatever. They're Mm going to have their own opinions. They're going to be a person, like a fully well-rounded person. For sure. And they're still able to remain impartial. So why does she have to remove herself so completely from humanity? Because she's a bit more powerful than a regular down-to-earth judge. Right. I believe that the judges on Earth, they only, they don't do any research about a case before it's presented to them. Mm -hmm. When they get presented a case, they do the research, whatever. They learn the defenses and... Prosecution. Sure, lawyer words. (laughs) And they're getting all of the most up-to-date and most relevant information from the people directly in front of them. So... Jen is more able to block out everything because she's all powerful, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that that's the difference. Okay. It just seems very odd that she would say specifically that she tries to learn as little as possible about the events of humankind so that she can remain impartial. Does that mean that she doesn't know that Trump is president at the moment? She might be aware, but not look into the details of how it happened or the controversy surrounding it. She might be just able to pick up the very basics, the top level headlines, and then not like have all the details. Mm, Okay. And I like that. I like the comment that she makes about just getting around to watching Ken Burns Vietnam, which she said was like super long, even though like time is meaningless for her. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because in Ken Burns Vietnam, He's quoted on saying he deliberately avoided historians or other experts, uh, other expert talking heads when doing his mini series about Vietnam Mm -hmm. because he wanted to remain impartial about the events that happened. Kind of like what Jen is doing. Right. I thought there was an interesting parallel there. Hmm. I'm I it still bothered me this moment. Just I was so surprised and. It sort of made me wonder how she can really judge their actions if she doesn't know the context that they were in which they were done. Mm -hmm. So I looked up judicial impartiality. Of course you did. (laughs) And I just I have a little bit of info. So uh, I read an article and it said a judge must have the freedom to decide cases based on the facts and the law not based on public opinion, the views of special interest groups, or even the judge's own personal beliefs. Okay, makes perfect sense, right? It's not like Jen would be reading very biased news articles. She's just getting facts as they are, like, this happened at this point. Trump elected president. Yes. World War II happens. Yes, that kind of thing. The article also said the protection is enforced so that the parties will know that they were dealt with fairly, that they received a fair trial and a fair hearing from a judge insulated from any improper outside influence and who is only bound by her conscience and the law. Okay, that makes sense to me. That seems fine. 
but judges on earth are within society. So part of their conscience is formed by the society that they live in, right? However, I doubt that some of these judges would be given a case that directly ref- has an impact on their portion of their life. Like a judge won't be given a case if they're in a an apartment building and it's the landlord who is the defendant or something because that judge is too close to the case. I mean, what judge is living in an apartment building? I know. Like, <laughs> they're making bank, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, it's very true. Like if it's someone that they have a relationship with, of course, you know, there's a conflict of interest there. But there's also the cases where the judge is not the end the be-all, end-all, say-all verdict. It will be based on the jury of peers. So there's also those type of cases. Mm. I wonder if there's a jury of peers. A jury of Janets. Oh, a no. A Janet jury. No, you can't have Janets. Janets aren't human. That's true. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about someone who hasn't lived the human experience judging humans living their experience. Agreed. And it also seems to kind of defeat the purpose when she can just, without even listening to their case, read all the information and just decide right from there. I mean, what's the point? Mm -hmm. Why not just always know all the information if you're just going to read it anyway? Yeah. If that's how things operate, then why wouldn't judges just read the facts and that's it? Yeah. We have lawyers who argue and, you know, attempt to sway judges in a certain direction. Or juries. Or juries, right? Mm -hmm. So why don't the four humans get to plead their case for real? They don't really get to. Exactly. And I mean, Jen just decides to test them or let them plead their case with a test, which was meaningless when it all comes down to it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Tell me your thoughts, guys. What did you think of Jen, our lovely judge? Also, I have to say, I wonder who wrote the files on the four of them And if they had an unfair bias against them. See, I think it would be something similar to in Harry Potter. When a magical child is born, the enchanted quill writes their name down on the list. So maybe there's just an enchanted... Maybe there's a Janet that just writes down all the details for every living person. So it's very impartial. But those details can be biased depending on what you choose to put in, choose to leave out. Absolutely, you're right. Um, the how system, you present them. This whole system of good place, bad place, judge seems to be inherently flawed. Yeah. Many, many reasons that it can be skewed in one way or another. It seems... Like a terrible system? Like a really terrible <laughs> system. And Michael's absolutely right to try and shake things up. Yep. Okay. Shall we continue? The judge tells them that they didn't follow the rules and therefore she needs to send them back to the bad place. They plead for her to hear their case and she agrees because it's either that or start bloodline. Back in bad place headquarters, Sean berates Michael for betraying him and bad Janet shows him the marble that used to be good Janet. So we learn that Tahani's godfather is Paul McCartney. I'm pretty sure we knew that actually. Did we? Yeah, I think she mentioned it last season. (laughs) Of course she would mention it. Yeah. Oh, Paul McCartney and Princess Diana, I think, were her godparents. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't matter what she was a princess of. No. No. (laughs) I really like how she turns Hey Jude into Hey Judge. Yeah, that's pretty great. Yeah. It's a good moment. So at this point... Jen says that the portals close until she has made a verdict. But really, at this point, she just says, well, you didn't file the paperwork. You don't have an advocate. So the rule says I have to send you back. And then the portals open. Right. And it's like, all right, see you later. Go ahead. Bye bye. Does she expect them to come back? Is that just that's it? That's it. It's done. She's yeah. Sorry, I didn't follow the rules. So go away. And by advocate, does she mean... A lawyer? A lawyer? Someone to plead their case for them? I think so. Or someone who filed the paperwork on their behalf, which just seems a little silly. Jason seems experienced. It seems like he's been his own lawyer in the past. Yeah, he Contrary could... to the, his, <laughs> the judge's opinion. 
he could do it again. He would fail really badly, but he could try. Why not? Won't get them more into the bad place. Mm -hmm. Jen says she hasn't had a case in 30 years. Mm -hmm. And we know that Mindy St. Clair has been around for about 30 years. Mm -hmm. So that was her last case. Yeah. Sounds like. We're still missing one case, though. Right. Keeping that open, I think. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, the writers are keeping that in their back pocket. They're going to pull it out someday. We're going to be like, what? They totally set that up from the beginning. What? That's great. We see Michael. He's being, you know, given a stern talking to from Sean. Yeah, immediately we are all our theories and ideas about what was going down with Sean and Michael at the end of last episode are just thrown out the window. Yeah. Sean knows he's been being double crossed mm-hmm. and Michael's in trouble and there's no amount of oh I was trying to catch them but they eluded me. <laughs> no, there's none of that. It's Michael's in crap. He's about to get retired. Yeah, I like that Michael is being honest at this point. He's not trying to pretend. Mm-hmm. He's just like, "Yep, I totally did all the stuff that you're accusing me of. I betrayed you guys, but you know what? The system sucks." They shouldn't be in the bad place. I think I did the right thing. So suck it. There you're you go. basic. You're basic. I love it. I love that moment. <laughs> um, I really like that you see that he's very, very clearly on the human side. And he refers to Eleanor as one of his actual friends, mm-hmm. which is a sweet moment. It is. And also, he's way more focused on the safety of the humans. He's talking about them being in front of the judge, the judge is going to see it how he sees it. He's way more focused on that than he is on his punishment. Yeah. Like, he really thinks he's going to get retired, but he's paying almost no mind to that at this point. Yeah, he's like, this this is an inevitability, so I might as well just see what I can do for my friends. Yeah, it's nice. It is. It's sweet. Okay, so then we get Bad Janet showing us the marbleized Good Janet. Um... I didn't think that they could do that to each other. Marbleize each other? Yeah. Well, I don't think there would be a precedent for having it in the code. Oh, I guess that's true. They wouldn't even imagine that a good Janet would try to marbleize another good Janet or a bad Janet because they would never be in the same place. I just don't think that they would even have it in the code that they'd be able to marble each other. Yeah. Or wouldn't be able to marble each other. They wouldn't even put that in there because it's... Not something they would even conceive of. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So since we've all seen the episode, I'm a, I'm assuming you've watched the episode before listening to this podcast. I mean, I mean we're not going to start each episode with a spoiler zone. Yeah, because okay. the whole thing is a spoiler. Yeah. So there's a potential hint in this moment that bad Janet was really good Janet all along. I was looking for hints and I couldn't see any. In the marble, good Janet is wearing her good Janet outfit. Yeah. She wasn't wearing that before. Why would she suddenly change into it when she's trying to hide? Right, because she was in her Bad Janet outfit. Yeah. And Bad Janet says, oh, I found her wandering the halls being polite to people. That's not how she was acting. That's very true. So... Good catch. I mean, it's definitely a moment where I think it goes by fast enough that you don't really register all of that. But that is, I think, a hint. It seems like it. Yeah. I didn't I didn't think our Janet was being a double agent or like a secret agent. I thought she was legit marbled. But, really? But she would oh. be able to unmarble herself because of all her powers. Oh, I thought she cool. could like break free or something because she seemed so in sync with Sean. Like mm-hmm. when they both said staycation at the exact same time and mm-hmm. like hand slapped each other. That was confusing to me. Yeah. Because I was looking for like, oh, maybe she's a double cross. Maybe she's a double agent. No, this seems too legit. Mm, and it totally mm-hmm. threw me off. Too legit to quit. That's yep. Janet for you. <laughs> the one thing I do wonder about the Marvel, though, is does that mean that our good Janet somehow made a bad Janet change her clothes before marbleizing her? Or maybe she just created a marble. She could have just made a marble with a Janet in it. Been like, hey, look what I can do. Oh, that's way simpler. Okay, that makes way more sense. I'm going with that theory. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
yeah, I knew right away that it wasn't Janet, that no way that she was going to be marbled. But I think that's just me knowing the rules of TV, right? Okay. Like they wouldn't do that to you? Yeah. It's like watching a, a procedural cop show. And there's, there's a threat every week, but you know that the main character isn't going to die. Right. There's no way they're killing off Darcy Carden, and there's no way they're going to make her just bad Janet. They're not going to kill off good Janet after all the progress that she's made this season. So I just kind of assumed that bad Janet had to be her. But I never thought about the possibility of her breaking free from the marble. So that's pretty cool. Mm. Yeah, I like that, Jason. You're thinking outside the box. Look yeah, at you. Yeah, because I think you're wrong in thinking that. What? Thinking that you know the show. But, you know, when it comes to basic things like that, like are you going to stop having an actor on the show or are you going to stop having one of the most popular characters on the show? Right. No, you're not going to do like that. The, like Your the ratings procedural, are going to plummet. The procedural cop show, they're, they catch the suspect in the first 10 minutes. You know it's not them. They yeah. still have like 40 minutes to go in the episode. Yeah, exactly. So Just don't get too comfortable in what you think the show is going to do for you. That's true. That's very true. I mean, true. I never thought we would never see our Janet again. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I wasn't sure how it would all play out. Okay. Because I know we've been duped before. That's true. So. I shouldn't be too comfortable. So that's a good warning. Yeah. Especially with the finale just on the around the corner. Mm, I'm excited and nervous. <laughs> okay. Shall we continue? Let's dive into the tests. All right. The judge decides to test the humans to see how much progress they've made. Eleanor advocates for them to be graded as a group, stating that the good place wouldn't feel right unless they were together. Aww. The judge introduces them to their test. Jason plays Madden football, and Tahani must walk down a hallway of rooms filled with people discussing what they really think about her. Another pop culture reference that is of our time, Madden 18. That's this year's football game. Oh, right. Yeah, that's true. Of course, the only thing I can think of is John Madden, John Madden, John Madden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo, 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 yo. Yeah. John Madden, John Madden. <laughs> that's all I can think of. <laughs> also, sports, video games just seems like the bad combo you know yes so your bad place would be you sitting down having to play sports games for the rest of eternity oh like all the nhl games and you no, never I get good it. at them oh. you never master them because i wouldn't want to <laughs> wouldn't want to play them no i like video games i don't like sports video games anyway before we dive right into the tests i like that Jen flirts with Chidi in this weird way because it really confuses him. <laughs> it's funny to see him just like not understand what she's doing when she says, ooh, who's the worst one of you guys? Oh, is it you, Glasses? I bet it's you. I bet it's you. And when she looks at him and she's like, oh, well, whatever floats your boat and she winks at him, he's just so baffled. Because I think in his mind, he's like, this is some omnipotent being. Why is she flirting with me? Yeah, why is she winking? Why is she doing that thing with her eye? (laughs) Shouldn't she be focused on something more important? Like our souls? Well, Jen hasn't seen an attractive man in 30 years. That's true. At least I don't think she has. Right. The last one she saw might have been Adam Scott. So, you know. Kyle Chandler on Bloodline. Oh, that's true. But she hasn't started that. So Friday Night Lights, Kyle Chandler. But in person, I mean. Oh, in person. Okay. And we find out the judge's name is Jen. Uh, It's really cute that it's short for hydrogen. And pretty much just lets us know that she was created shortly after the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. So she's been around a long time. Of course, this made me wonder if other planets and galaxies with life forms have a similar afterlife system. Yes, I'm talking about aliens. Hmm. How are aliens judged? What Hmm? if there are no Hmm? aliens? Hmm? Oh, come on. There's got to be aliens out there. There's no way in the entire universe that we are like the only thing. And what about silicon-based life forms and not hydrogen-based life forms? Hmm. Are animals judged in like an animal afterlife? No, because they're not sentient. 
the wolf place? No, because their whole life is driven by instinct. Well, how do we know that? Because of hundreds how of do we know? of no, research. I, we're not in the minds of the snakes <laughs> and the bees and the dogs and the cats. So their whole their whole thing is mate, feed, kill, repeat. I'm just saying we do that too from outside observers. So Except some of us are more sentient than others, I guess. We know what we're doing. Pusha, all dogs go to heaven. Argument over. (laughs) Self-awareness. Okay. So, anyway, immediately I thought of aliens, and then I was like, okay, reel it back. (laughs) Focus on the show. Maybe if they do a tour of the good place, or good places, we'll see, like, an alien good place. Mm. Yeah. That could be neat. They have somebody from another galaxy come in to, you know, consult. As a representative? Yeah. Ooh, and it'll be a crossover with, like, the Orville. Mm. So the tests. What did you think when you first were introduced to Jason's test? I thought, what's the test? Mm, Me too. Why is he sitting down to play? Oh, okay, because he has to play against his favorite team, but where's the test? Yeah. So I don't really like that one. I was wondering if maybe the test was listening to instructions but that just didn't make a lot of sense how does that determine how much progress you've made morally it just seems like it doesn't no because anybody can listen to instructions it's how well you follow them or whether you base your decisions based on those instructions or Mm -hmm. if someone tells you to kill somebody whether you follow through or what you think about the situation or circumstance or etc 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 there has to be more depth to it than just sit down, play this video game, but you can't be your favorite team. Yeah. I was waiting for the twist for that one, and then it just never came. So I feel like that test was determined because she already knew that there was no way he was going to go to the good place, just based on his actions on Earth. He's just never going to go. I think she gave all of them tests that they were doomed to fail. Except Eleanor surprised her. Now that I think about it, Jason was most likely sent to the bad place because he couldn't control any of his impulses, which made him do a lot of the bad actions, right? Like blowing up Acid Cat's speedboat, trying to rob places, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So if he's able to manage his impulse control, then that could show some growth. Right. Agreed. But the situation that she sets him up in kind of means that he needs to be a little bit smarter than he is because she says, if you play the game, right, which he's not going to pick up on. No. That's that's setting him up for failure right there. But then for Chidi, being in a situation where he just needs to choose a hat, she's testing to see whether he's... Uh, progressed from being incredibly indecisive, which, which was always his issue. Exactly. But this is such a high pressure situation that maybe that's the point. I feel like it would be so much more intense than anything he dealt with on Earth. Which maybe is the point because it is such a simple test mm. that if he can't even make a simple decision, then how is he supposed to make a complex decision? But at the same time, sometimes complex decisions can be easier because you can break down different parts of them and. And this is just a hat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it took me like 20 minutes to decide the other day if I was going to buy the Dark Willow pop figure or if I was just going to leave it. <laughs> no, seriously. I was in Hot Topic. I was looking at all the new Buffy pop figures that they've got out. And I was like, should I just get the Dark Willow? I mean, I don't love Dark Willow. I don't really find the campy villain thing fun. Not with her anyway. Plus, she was Dark Willow because of events that make me sad, so maybe I don't want to buy her. But also, if I just buy her now, there's a deal on. And yeah, it took me like way too much time to so figure that out. So you cheated the whole situation. I totally cheated it. So I kind of get that. Mm-hmm. And I still don't think that makes him a bad person. It's just his indecisiveness ruined. Not ruined, but made other people miserable Mm -hmm. but would he be doing that in the good place with his indecisiveness he would already be 
in the good place. But he thought he was in the good place for all of season one, and he was indecisive about everything still. He was indecisive because a lot of the choices that he was presented with were things that he never expected to deal with in the good place. Like Very true. Eleanor's secret identity. And having three women after him. Yeah, not supposed to happen in the good place. Right. Okay, so I see your point. Yeah. Still, I think those are the least creative um, tests. Tahani's was perfect. I thought it was great. And I like that the goal for her test was really clear. I knew right away, okay, she's not going to be able to go through any doors and pass the test. Yeah, there's no hidden... So obviously she's not supposed to open any doors because she's not supposed to care about what others think about her. Which is just what she said in Best Self when she said she needs to stop relying on others for her sense of self-worth and happiness. Mm -hmm. At this moment, that's what she needs to do in this hallway. Yeah. So who do you think has made the least progress out of the four? Cheaty. Right. Okay. Why Cheaty? He still sucks at choosing things. Yeah, he but so his... does Jason. He's Jason still sucks at impulse control, obviously. Yes, but he has learned a little bit about expressing himself, confronting his feelings. Okay. He's still impulsive, but I think we all are sometimes. Yeah. But I think he's learned a lot about himself and dealing with people. Mm-hmm. And Eleanor's right. I think about 20% is growth. Yeah, yeah. 80% still impulsive, rash thinking Jason, but, you know, that's his charm. 20% is something. Yeah. Yeah, I would say it's pretty much a tie between Jason and Chidi, but Chidi might win the least progress award. But Just because I think that this Chidi has not made as much progress as season one Chidi did. Hmm. Now, so I, I am comparing him to his past self. I can give him a bit of a pass, though, because it's easier for the students to learn a lot faster than the teacher. Right. So he's spending all his time trying to teach them ethics and morality, and he's not giving himself a chance to grow very much. Mm-hmm. So, so he kind of gets a pass for me. Okay. I think Tahani is very close with Eleanor about the most improved player. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Especially in this episode. Yeah, yeah. So when she's walking down the hallway, I'm going to go back to her test for the moment. Mm -hmm. I definitely had to do some name searching. Oh, okay. I didn't know who Blue Ivy Carter was. Really? (laughs) No idea. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, that's Jay-Z and Beyonce's daughter. Uh, Yeah, I knew that just because the name Blue Ivy was so bizarre. Along with Northwest. I mean, I knew who Northwest was. Yeah. But it seemed a little silly that they were both in a room talking about Tahani because they're like four and five years old. Kuvanjane Wallace uh, in the same room as Stephen Hawking. I mean, I guess they made up. But she is the youngest actress ever to receive a nomination for the Academy Award. Okay. Um, and also the first person born in the 21st century nominated for an Oscar. She's like 13. What is her relationship to Stephen Hawking? There isn't one. I think it's just supposed to be funny (laughs) because they're like two opposite ends of the spectrum. Oh. And the fact that they made up is even better. Right. So Tahani would have like all the hot gossip. So she would know if they had an argument. Oh, for sure. But it wouldn't be published in the media. But I mean, uh. she, Kuvanjane is another very young person that would be talking about Tahani, I guess. Well, you know, she's won an Oscar, so she's probably smart enough to hold a conversation about her feelings about Tahani. I'm sure she would be. Hmm. I think if I was Tahani, I would have just ran as fast as I could to that door. Close your eyes yep. and just book it. Close your eyes and book it. I mean, I don't know if you can really do that in heels, but... Close your eyes and just walk forward. Then. Haven't you seen Jurassic World? That's the <sighs> whole thing. She's running with heels pretty much the last half of the movie. Okay, that's just a recipe for breaking all of your things. So... Rumor I think that's has horrible. it that she actually did that with heels most of the movie. Yeah, well, and rumor she has it that's a stupid calves. idea. Oh, I'm sure. 
I, I just, I can barely walk in heels. I'm not going to try and run in them. <laughs> All right, so moving on. Sean discovers the extent of Michael's lies, and Michael argues for the humans going to the good place. Meanwhile, Eleanor and Chidi are tested together. The test? Deciding whether or not to accept the offer to the good place and leave the others behind. Man, that would suck. Yep. I do not envy them. But she has to go with what she had said earlier. Judge them all together. Uh, Does she have to? That's what they're exploring, right? Integrity. Does she have to go through with it? Old Um, Eleanor would say, nope, and mm -hmm. just dive through the portal. Yep. Peace out, guys. It's It's been great. It's like she was going to do in episode five, four, Team Cockroach. Yeah, she was going to take the duffel bag of Coke and just get on the train and go to Mindy's. Yeah, she was like, I'm out of here. Like, I barely know you guys. I'm not going down this road. Things have changed, obviously. Yeah. So when Michael's talking to Sean, he says that they were bad people and this isn't supposed to be possible. Like, they're not supposed to be able to get better. Bad people aren't supposed to learn how to be good. Yeah. Which is another super flawed reasoning from yeah. everybody in the bad place. Absolutely. That's we life. discussed this in like a first season of our show. Yeah. That's life. That's learning. I mean, none of us are in a fixed place for all our lives. We change. And to think that humans can't change, can't evolve is ridiculous. I mean, if someone was in the good place for millennia would they start becoming selfish and self-absorbed and narcissistic because they're so amazing i made it to the good place i've been here so long become like tahani right is it possible that they would regress my god the good place would be full of tahanis they'd be full of like tahanis and camillas you know i'm amazing those people very very possible i'm just saying no one's fixed Everyone is always changing, and you know, how not do you everybody's have an afterlife bad system forever. that reflects that. Yeah, not everybody's good forever. Yeah, I'm not saying like, oh yeah, give Hitler a chance. But the whole point but... of our prison system is reform. Wow, well, it's, it's supposed, supposed to be. be. <laughs> but the point is, they're supposed to be in prison, get better, learn their mistakes. And come out changed person. Mm -hmm. Should you be sentenced to an eternal damnation for, you know, stealing a loaf of bread like Jean Valjean? No. Or Aladdin? No, but apparently it's minus 14 points or something. That could tip the scale. Yeah, you never know. Bogus! (laughs) It's bogus! I do like that Michael is convinced that they actually belong in the good place. He's Mm -hmm. not putting on a show for them. He's really just talking to Sean. So, we know that this is the truth, which is nice. And so, any of you out there that are still, like, suspicious of Michael... Come on our side. It's nice over here. Yeah, it's nice. It's got yeah. frozen yogurt. Ooh, should we have ice cream? Yes. Okay. We definitely should have ice cream. <laughs> In Eleanor and Chidi's test, I really like the parallel of Eleanor figuring out the truth, right? She's already set up to believe that there's going to be a twist here, that the test is not really the test. Um, So I like the moment where she turns around. She's like, hey, judge, I figured it out. Just like Just like season in season one, one the finale. Right? Like, yep. all right, bring the train. Let's go. Let's go to the bad place. Yep. Come on. I'm and, ready to go. And several times at the beginning of this season where she's like, oh, this is the bad place, right? Yeah. It's nice that we get a little moment there and that it's subverted this time. No, that's not the test. You actually have to make a choice here. Now, I wonder what would happen if Eleanor had been like, yeah, let's go to the good place. Would she have actually like, gone through the portal and just gone right to the bad place? Or or <laughs> Jen would have sat them all down and be like, no, you failed. Yeah, okay, probably. So, little side note, Eleanor tells Jen that she's got a little bit of hot sauce on her chin. And Jen tells her, it's not hot sauce, it's actually the concept of envy. So, I was wondering, what other feelings would taste good? I've got a couple for you. good? Yeah, I have another couple for you. Okay. I think jealousy would have a bit of a sour kick to it. 
Ooh. So you put it in like... You dip candy in it. Mm, you add like a little squirt of it to your, your Diet Coke or something like that. Just like lime. Okay. See, I feel like she would put like sprinkles of glee on ice cream. And a dash of belonging in mashed potatoes, you know? <laughs> belonging? Yeah, because mashed potatoes is like comfort food and like you feel comforted when you feel like you belong somewhere. Because they're like nice fluffy clouds. That's why fluffy they're comfort Fluffy potato foods. clouds, exactly. Yeah. It's heavenly food, very literally. <laughs> um, yeah, so it just, I don't know. It's a fun little exercise thinking of what feelings would taste what way, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. Kind of like the whole frozen yogurt shop in episode four or five, I believe, when Eleanor is there and she's looking at all the different flavors. Right. Like, full oh, cell phone battery. Full cell phone battery. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. Okay. Fresh laundry. Fresh laundry. All that. Yeah, that's nice. Tell me, guys, what feelings would you add to what foods? Hmm? Hmm? I want to know. Tell me your ideas. Because we got such great hot dog suggestions last episode. Oh my episode. goodness. This is so good. Uh, go check out our Twitter. You will find some some great hot dog torture ideas. And of course, I like that Eleanor knows Chidi's different grimaces. Hashtag soulmates. Mm-hmm. Just calling it now. I don't know. Just a little thought that I had about all these tests that Jen puts them through. Mm-hmm. They all kind of seem like torture. Ooh. Interesting. Jason having to play against his favorite team. Mm-hmm. Chidi having to pick anything. Mm-hmm. Tahani not getting to listen to what people have to say about her and be tempted mm-hmm. the whole time. Eleanor's doesn't really feel like torture to me, except. I think it's Eleanor having to work actively against her selfish instinct, mm-hmm. right? To just take the offer and run. She has to do the right thing. And that's hard for her, but not as hard as it used to be. It's not impossible. It's just takes more effort. I don't have any other thoughts about this, but I just, I just felt a little bit like torture scenarios. Okay. No, I get that. Yeah, I agree with you. But aren't all tests torture, right? Not if you know you're good at them. You Mm. study for them. You're prepared. Even then, don't you get anxious? Because I do. Sometimes. But if you were to test me on like horror movies, I'd be like, let's go. Let's do it. Oh, that's true. If I got like a test on Buffy, Buffy, I'd be like, all right, I'm going to ace this. Yeah, exactly. So So not all tests are bad. That's true. Tahani enters the room with her parents. Jason meditates to relieve his frustration and realizes the obvious. This is a test. No dur. Tahani confronts her parents as they insult her and talk about her sister. Sean chooses to place Michael in an unmarked room instead of retiring him. Just as he's about to leave Michael with his never-ending stack of New Yorker magazines, Janet reveals her true identity. She beats up Sean and escapes with Michael. Okay, so going right back to Tahani. That can't be her real parents, right? No, it's it's kind of like cheaty. It's just a projection of her parents and... Probably all the information that Jen has on them. Right. Corp- corporealized. Yeah, okay. Because if it was, like, they would have to be dead, and then the judge would have to pull them out of wherever they are. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, I'm really proud of Tahani. Yeah. She did a great job in this episode. I'm She doesn't glad. get mad. She doesn't get angry. She's just like, oh, I was just never going to be good enough. Mm-hmm. Why am I wasting my time concerned about you guys? Of course, I would love if you could respect me and be proud of me. But if you're just never going to give me that, no matter what, I'm not going to kill myself trying anymore. Yep. But I like that she doesn't leave with like a F you, you're the worst, you were terrible parents. She's just, I wish we had a better relationship. Wish you all the best. Done. Yep. Because if she had left in a huff... You know, if she had left swearing and saying horrible things to them, it would have showed that she still really cares. Yeah, exactly. But her calm behavior just kind of shows, hey, I'm done. I'm honestly just done with this. Very proud of her. So I'm pretty sure that we predicted last week that Sean would want to keep Michael's 
plans or Michael's failure a secret. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it was a really big prediction because it no. seemed kind of obvious. Yeah. Like, Sean would not want to have to go down with Michael. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, like I said, I saw the twist of good Janet pretending to be bad Janet right at the beginning of the episode. And so this reveal was just very meh for me. It didn't even really register. It was like, oh, yeah, okay. There we go. We're doing the obvious now. Thank you. I liked it. Okay. <laughs> I was pleased with good. it. Good. No, I'm glad it worked for you. I feel like it could have been handled better to create some real tension, but that's just my opinion. I do know a lot of other people who were very happy with the reveal. They thought it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And it was fun in that moment to see good Janet kick the crap out of Sean, right? That's that's a nice moment. Definitely. So now does this mean that our Janet... Is a good Janet and a bad Janet? So I have some thoughts on this. Okay. And a Reddit user on the Good Place subreddit mm. articulated these thoughts very well. Okay. So I'm going to do a direct quote from Reddit user Caleb35. And he says, or she says, Okay, so completely tangential thought. It seems good Janet has continued to evolve if she can actually pass as bad Janet. That means she's no longer one or the other, but both. Good and bad Janet residing in one Janet. This would seem to make her exceedingly powerful. And what is her final end state? And directly after that, the Reddit user S word of the morning says, Good Janet has now evolved enough to create a neighborhood somewhere else. Mm. So in case you're not aware, the next episode is called Somewhere Else. Right. So these this user believes that Janet will be able to create a new neighborhood. And That's I totally exciting. agree. I think that would be the next step in this show. Not have a good place or a bad place or a medium place. Something totally different. Yeah. Something new that would be outside of Sean's radar or Sean's boss's radar or anyone's radar because it would literally be like something brand new. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, I want that to be true. And I just think it's really cool that she now embodies both because that that's the first one in existence, right? There's never been a Janet before who's been good Janet and bad Janet. Yeah, no other Janet's been rebooted 800 times. Yeah. She just keeps proving that she's the most advanced Janet in the universe. And I'm proud of her. I am just full of happiness. I love her. <laughs> She's amazing. Go Janet. Go Janet. Hashtag Janet forever. Hashtag our Janet. Yeah. Hashtag our Janet. Um, a little side note. I do love Michael's smirk after Janet kicks Sean. He's so proud of her. <laughs> That's his evil smirk returning. <laughs> and it's it makes sense in this context. It's great. He's like, oh, yeah. I just mean, saw my boss get his butt kicked. Yeah. I feel like even good people like a little justice, right? Oh, yeah, for so. sure. Moving on. Eleanor and Chidi struggle to make a choice until Eleanor realizes she's not talking to the real Chidi. The judge congratulates her on a job well done. Chidi's real test is to choose between two hats. The four humans complete their tests and Jen tells them they've failed. They're all going to the bad place. Jen reviews the tests with everyone and Eleanor pretends she failed too. All right, so we go back to Eleanor and Chidi doing their test, and Eleanor runs through some of the arguments that they've discussed. She says uh, we've talked about contractualism, which is um, a callback to what we owe to each other. I believe it was season one, episode six, when Eleanor has to help Michael try to find the problem in the neighborhood. Mm Mm-hmm. So I'm guessing here they're discussing, do they owe it to Tahani and Jason to go to the bad place with them? Um, She also mentions that they've discussed Kantian arguments, which I assume is, do they have to keep their promise? Which, of course, Kant would say yes. But then she says, what would Superman do and what would Rihanna do? So I know very little about Rihanna and very little about Superman. But I'm curious, listeners out there who know Superman, who know Rihanna, 
what do you think that they would do in this situation? Jason, do you have any ideas? Superman seems like a very stable person. Well, not person, but alien, I guess. Aliens, it's coming up again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. His morals aliens. seem to be in line with some high class stuff. Like in the old 70s and 80s Superman movies, he's like super, super righteous. Ah. Like he'll do everything in his power, literally, to save people, including turn back time. Okay. So do you think he'd sacrifice himself? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I think he would go down with the rest of his group. Mm -hmm. So fake Chidi's argument to me seems to be rooted in hedonistic utilitarianism. So the idea of what will cause the greatest happiness to the greatest number. So if all four humans are going to be separated in the bad place, which it seems like Eleanor is assuming that at the end of the episode, like I'm going to remember you because we're never going to be together. Mm -hmm. Um, it makes sense that Eleanor and Chidi's presence in the same realm won't actually have a positive effect on Jason and Tahani. So it's not going to make them overall more happy. It will make literally no difference if they all go together or they all go separately. I think that Jason and Tahani would be sadder if Eleanor and Chidi didn't go because they would feel like a friend that they trust broke a promise to them. And they were abandoned. But I think that going to the good place would make Eleanor and Chidi so much happier that it would definitely be the option you would choose. You don't think they might feel a little guilty? Mm. But I think that's part of the point. Yeah, I think test. it would still make them overall happier. Right, because they're not being a Turk. They're not being tortured for eternity. Exactly. But Chidi has gone on the record as being a Kantian, which means he would not break a promise. Mm -hmm. So this is a huge red flag. Even before he says the let's forget about ethics for a second, which is the hugest red flag. <laughs> yeah, that's like a big sign saying, hey, I'm not Chidi. Yeah, you might as well just tattoo it on his forehead. Did you realize that it wasn't him before that moment? Yes. Yeah? Really? When did you know it wasn't him? I think as soon as she told them they were being tested together, I got... My spidey senses started tingling. Oh. And I knew something was up. Okay. I didn't think that it wasn't Chidi, but I thought there was something else going on. Mm. And then as the test went on, and Eleanor was the one pacing back and forth through the doors, mm. and Chidi's standing there just like, stop that. Right. I think that was the moment. And I was like, no, this doesn't seem like Chidi. Oh, yeah, that's a very good point. He's always the one pacing around mm -hmm. while Eleanor sits on the couch in the, the fake good place or stands around. And she's yeah. the one doing all the talking when normally it would be Chidi. Right. He's not acting like Chidi at no, all. No, he's not. So that was that was the red flag for me. Okay. Yeah, I really only realized it when... He said, let's forget about ethics for a second. And you're like, wait, wait, hold it. I was like, uh, what? No, no, that doesn't make any sense. Excuse me? Yeah. But then it kind of hurt my heart because the moment right after that, the fake Chidi takes Eleanor's hand. He looks into her eyes. He says that they deserve to be happy together. And you can see it in Eleanor's eyes, too. She's upset because she knows it's not him. Yeah. And also it's like... <sighs> This is what I want to hear, but I don't want to hear it from you because you're not him. Yeah. Uh, harsh, harsh, harsh. I like that her first instinct is to check if Chidi is okay. She's like, where is he? Is he okay? Hashtag soulmates. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if you couldn't tell, her test is definitely my favorite. I think it's super obvious that she's grown the most out of the four humans. And of course... You really see that when she chooses to reveal or not to reveal that she was successful. Yeah, that was the icing on the cake right there when she says, yep, I failed too. Oh, yeah, I pushed an old lady on my way to the shrimp bar. And she thought that was like the worst thing ever too, which is great. Yeah. I wonder if someone's going to call her out on that in the finale. Like something's up with that. You passed, didn't you? Or Jen will straight up say, like, Eleanor saying that she failed was another reason that I was rooting for her, but blah, 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 blah. Oh, know. okay. Okay. Going back to the, the tests, Jen 
when she comes in on Jason meditating, yeah, I was totally blown away. I was completely shocked mm. that he was sitting there meditating. So I'm like, that's not something Jason would do. If he's frustrated and he's trying to calm himself down, that's something new. If he's frustrated, he's going to grab a Molotov cocktail and like Bortles it. <laughs> like, that's what he's going to do. He's going to try and break the TV or break the system or something. He's not going to sit down and meditate. Mm. So this is something that Gianni would do. So it seemed like that was insane growth for him. And Jen was surprised when she came in and saw him doing it too. She's like, mm. what are you doing? He's like, I'm calming myself down and meditating. The look on her face was like complete shock and mm. surprise. So mm-hmm. I like that. Oh, yeah, that is a good moment. I didn't really think too much about it. I think I was too focused on the Jason coming to a realization about something really obvious. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, wait, this is the test. Yeah. Yeah, I literally told that to you. So just briefly going back to Eleanor's test, um, when it begins, Jen tells them that they've earned their way into the good place and the portal doors open. Earlier in the episode, she says that the portals remain closed until she's issued a ruling. So does that mean that Eleanor was actually allowed to go to the good place? And then when you watch Jen's eyes, when she's telling them that they've made it in, she looks directly at Eleanor when she says, you've made it to the good place. And when she says, you really do deserve this. So I don't know. I kind of feel like she actually was going to let her go. I really think that Eleanor passed Mm -hmm. and would have gone to the good place were it not for this whole great us together rule. Well, suggestion, really. Interesting. I would be inclined to agree with you. Mm. So you had a few comments from Reddit users and now I have one. Reddit user Grinning Dentrassi pointed out that Jen taught each of the humans a lesson. Tahani was able to resist everyone except her parents, but now she's past that. She let Jason know that he needed to work on pausing and thinking things through. And now Chidi knows that not every choice is a terrifying question between right and wrong. This user makes a good point. Mm -hmm. Even though Jen's tests were maybe not what we think were the best for figuring out how much moral progress they've made. She did teach them a lesson. Yeah, each test taught all of our humans a lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't really think about that, but that's good. Mm -hmm. When she says to Jason that uh, he showed great improvements, Mm -hmm. Tahani looks so proud of him. She looks like, oh my goodness, you that's great. And then immediately Jen says... But then you basically told me to shut up and go away. Then Tahani looks shocked and appalled. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was great. Some great, I don't know what they call it, like side acting or background acting. Mm. When you're not focused on that person, but they're still... Engaged yeah. in the scene. Yeah, yeah. Good job, Jamila. Shall we get to the end of the episode? Let's do it. This has been uh, one kicker of an episode so far. We've had a lot to talk about. Mm-hmm. The four humans make peace with the verdict. Just as Jen finishes a slideshow of their time together, Michael and Janet appear through the portal. The slideshow is adorable, as (laughs) is the song choice. Did you ever know that you're my hero? Mm -hmm. Like, she's supposed to be impartial, but she clearly loves them. Like, she thinks they're so cute and adorable. She's just in love with Tahani's accent. Yeah, and and she thinks Chidi's the bad boy. Yeah. (laughs) And that one slide that she says she's going to frame and then it appears right behind them in the background. Mm -hmm. That was a good little, uh, good little gag. Yeah. Like that. So I do have a little, just, I guess a little thought I had at the end of the episode. I wonder if the good place really exists. Oh. I feel like it's possible that it's a promise that no one can truly keep. Huh. So there is no good place. There's just varying levels of bad place. Maybe. And like everyone thinks that the good place exists, but it doesn't. And there's only like maybe a few higher ups that know that it doesn't really exist. It's like a a very big secret, you know? Right. So even everyone in Michael's department still thinks that there's a good place and all that. Yeah. Because they're not in on it. Like they're yeah. not, they don't have, it's it's above their pay grade to know that information. Yeah. 
Oh, I like very that. Very classified information. I like that. There is no good place. <laughs> there is no good place. Guys, we can't actually make like a heavenly dimension for all of you guys. Because that would be so difficult to make, right? Everyone on Earth is crappy. Or that. Everyone on Earth was crappy enough to deserve some level of the bad place. There so... used to be good places, but the whole system's antiquated night right now. Like nobody has been into a good place in hundreds of millennia. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I don't think that the show's actually gonna do that. I really do think eventually but if they do, we'll go. If there. they do, you heard it here first. Oh, that's true. That's true. And you could credit the idea to me. <laughs> and not the writers. Nope. <laughs> Okay, shall we get to our mailbag? Mail. Our first piece of mail comes from Len. We received a wonderfully kind email um, from this listener who found our podcast through a Tumblr post. Yes, we have a Tumblr. Um, Len asked us, what was your favorite moment of the burrito? My favorite moment is the intro when they're not sure whether the burrito is the judge and they're all kind of debating it. I mean, it's only like 30, 40 seconds, but it's still great. Okay. Especially Jason's confident, like, I'll eat the burrito. I don't care. He gets up to (laughs) it and he's like, wait, what if the burrito is the judge? Mm, Okay. I don't know. I guess I would have to say the entirety of Eleanor's test. I think that was probably my favorite moment. But surprisingly, my most favorite gag is just Jen saying, yeah, I stated that really clearly. That's not a revelation. When Jason (laughs) is like, wait, this is the test? Yeah, I just love that moment. She's like, what do you... No, 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 no. Plus... Out of context, you can use that for a lot of stuff. P.S. We run no context good place. And by we, she means she runs. Yeah, I run it. So send me your requests, bros. Okay. Our next piece of mail comes from Kasim. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Or Kasim. Or Kasim. Okay. Um, They said, I would like to discuss how you think the show is going to end. Like, where is it going? To me personally, I don't think it will end with the group of four and Michael being in the good place, like the show expects you to hope. I think that by the end of the show, it will be discovered that medium people, like the group of four, can redeem themselves with some work, and that they deserve to be in the good place. So I think the creators of light and darkness that rule over the good place and bad place will name the group of four and Michael architects for a new kind of neighborhood, the rehabilitation place. Of course, our Janet will be the Janet of this new place. Rehabilitation. Rehabilitation place. Huh. Hmm. The rehab place. (laughs) Oh, goodness. They're not going to change the name to that. No, no. (laughs) But I like the idea of them being put into their own neighborhood that doesn't fit the current meta of good and bad. Mm Hmm. And that may be people who are, you know, kind of crummy, but not horrible, we'll get a chance, we'll get a second chance, you know? So... They're going to create, like, the Cincinnati of the afterlife. So Mindy, theoretically, could get better and be promoted to the good place. Maybe, yeah. So the this, this medium place or this new rehabilitation place could just be a place for people to go who weren't good or bad they're just kind of medium and then they can upgrade Mm -hmm. or downgrade yeah interesting personally um i'm not really sure how this season is gonna end but the show as a whole i think is just going to be a big surprise i feel like the show has just gone in so many directions i wasn't picturing um but I really do think that there's just going to be this huge shakeup of the afterlife system. And that's going to be where we're heading mm-hmm. anyway. You kind of knew the direction of season one. It's just this kind of straight line. Eleanor is trying to get better. But then season two is just like, all bets are off. You could just go anywhere. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to predict where the show could be in 
five seasons, ten seasons. Mm-hmm. We really don't even know how long the show is going to run for. So, right. mm-hmm. but. but I like your uh, your idea. Definitely, I would be pleased with something like that. Thanks for the thoughts. Mm-hmm. Our next piece of mail comes from Tanya. Tanya says, what do you think about the fact that the show hasn't really addressed the morality of infinite reward or punishment for finite beings, who are by definition only capable of performing finite deeds? I find it frustrating because the show is so otherwise good at questioning what's moral, and I kind of thought that the flaws in the system would be brought up when they met the judge, but that didn't happen. Do you think this issue is ever going to be addressed? That's a really good thought, Tanya. Um, The idea that these finite beings are being punished for an infinite amount of time for their deeds on a finite span of time Mm -hmm. like eleanor is not even 30 and she's going to be judged for the rest of eternity yeah that does not seem fair at all right i believe the next episode is going to go over some of those aspects Mm, maybe not address them like head on but kind of skirt around those general ideas and yeah, this is definitely flaws in the system. Oh, huge flaw in this system. It doesn't make any sense. It just seems ridiculous. It seems like maybe you should be paying for the amount of time that you actually spent on Earth. So 30 years of torture for 30 years of bad deeds. Sure. Not eternity of torture for 30 years of your life on Earth. Although our current punishment system does not work like that. No. You do one thing that could take you a minute and you could get sentenced to 100 years in jail. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. So, I don't know, maybe like multiply it by 10. 30 years, 300 years, sure. But then after that, you get a you get a second chance. Hmm, okay. I don't know. I'm just throwing numbers out there since this Oh, interesting. Whole you get a system. second chance. It's not like you just cease to exist. Reincarnation. Mm. Oh, you get a second chance at life. Ooh. Not a second chance of like maybe going to the good place or something. Like right. like a hearing, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. probation. Like proba- parole. Parole, that's what I meant. Yes. Yes. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, Tanya, your your comments have sparked some interesting thoughts. Yeah. I like you. Mm-hmm. So the next thing I want to bring up is not really male. We did an interview with John from the Flat Circle blog. We've posted it on our Twitter and our Facebook, so you can go find it there or go to flatcircleblog.com. You should see a little interview, the two of us being charming, I think. It was just basically questions about our thoughts on The Good Place and uh, how we got started in doing podcasting. So thanks a lot, John, for sending us some questions. And Yeah, that was cool. I felt famous for a second. <laughs> Bitch, we are famous. <laughs> okay. So that brings us to the end of Fork and Bullshirt, a Multiverse Radio production. If you like this show, then please leave us a rating and a review on iTunes. This is the best way for other people to find the show when they're scrolling through iTunes, looking for new things to listen to. I, we're going to pop up first if we have lots of reviews. Mm-hmm. So I'm just saying. Review us. Yeah, also, we just love reading them because it's really nice to hear what you guys think. Um, If you want to get in touch with us, we are on Twitter at Multiverse Radio and on Facebook at Multiverse Radio Podcast. And you can email us from our website, multiverseradio.ca. And if you want to see fun, no context, good place pictures, follow us at no context TGP on Twitter and on Tumblr. (laughs) And we will be back next week with our review of the season two finale somewhere else. I can't believe we're there already. I know. I'm so sad. I think I'd rather be somewhere else. (laughs) Somewhere. A magical land where the good place plays all year long. And every episode's a new episode. Yeah. There's no fall finale, winter finale, whatever. None of this garbage. No, no. Every week, get a new episode. That's how it works. Bye, everyone. Bye. Back in bad, back in the bad place. H Q. H H Q. The worst word H-Q-D's. ever. H Qties. Bum bum.
Why you didn't go with me? No, because you were okay. gonna laugh. Okay. <laughs> 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 it's gonna be hard to do now. Okay. Don't look at me with that face. I don't know what other face to look at you with. <laughs> Not that one. Okay. What about this one? Bum bum. <laughs> you gotta go it with goes, me. Bum bum. Bum 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 bum. Try again. Try again. I'm try doing it. it fine. You're just laughing. Okay. Try again. Bum 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 why? I don't know. It's too funny to listen to. Okay, well, there you go. That's all we have. <laughs> <laughs>